The only garbage I see floating out there is his supporters. Let's bring in our panel, President and Executive Editor at The Daily Signal, Robert Bluey, also former Assemblyman of California, Mike Gatto. Uh, welcome into Newsline, guys. Great to have you with us. Great to be Thanks, here. Thanks, Bianca. There are moments in campaigns, uh, obviously words matter. You can't put the toothpaste back in the tube here. Did Joe Biden have one of those last night? And I will start with you, Robert. He certainly did. I mean, isn't it uh, <laughs> revealing, Bianca, when these candidates uh, tell what they really, really think of Republicans and conservatives uh, behind closed doors? I mean, Hillary Clinton, in that clip you just showed, was speaking to an LGBT fundraising dinner. Biden, of course, rallying Latinos. Uh, probably never expected this video would get out and the American people would see uh, what he said. Now, of course, you know, his the White House is trying to walk this back. You see many traditional and establishment media organizations now covering for Joe Biden saying it was simply misspeaking, referring to the comedian and not all of Trump's supporters. I don't buy it, Bianca, and here's why. Because you know that deep down, the Democrats who are in the White House right now have a hostile view of not only Donald Trump, but all of those people who support him. And I think it's going to motivate them to turn out next Tuesday or vote early if they haven't already. Yeah, you're right about the media playing cover. Washington Post calls the garbage reference disputed. Um, it kind of is like uh, the cheap fake comments that Karine Jean-Pierre tried to tell Americans when Joe Biden was wandering off, but yet they did replace him. Mike, when you heard him say that last night, at the night where she's giving her closing arguments, what did you think? Did, did you realize the gravity right away? Did you pick up on it yourself? I did. I, my first reaction was that it's an unforced error. It's not something that you want to be doing this close to Election Day. It's uh, it's a mistake. Just like, frankly, having comedian Tony Hinchcliffe, you know, to speak was a mistake. These are things that the campaign should not be doing. They should be, uh, in these late days, saying that they welcome support from all sides. And they should also be changing the tone, because after Tuesday, the entire American nation is going to need to rally around whoever wins that election. I think it's an interesting note uh, that John Stewart, a comedian, um, actually had this to say about a fellow comedian who's a roast uh, comedian. And this was his reaction to what he heard on, on Madison Square Garden. Having a roast comedian come to a political rally a week before Election Day and roasting a key voting demographic, probably not the best decision by the campaign politically. <laughs> but to be fair... The guy's really just doing what he does. He went on to say that, you know, he thought it was funny. Uh, I mean, this is something, I mean, uh, John Stewart saying that, saying he's not offended. You know, we have these wider conversations about it. It's, you're not allowed to be funny anymore. But, yes, these could be construed as unforced errors. But at the same time, this is um, a theme that we believe uh, is is detrimental to her campaign, the Democrats do, uh, because even uh, top super PAC said uh, attacking Trump fascism is not persuasive. And here, by the way, was Biden, because he wasn't even invited to this event, and um, he says he wasn't going to attend, but clearly maybe he should have, and he wouldn't have been on that Vote Latino web call. Mr. President, will you be watching the vice president's speech tonight? I will. Why are you not attending? It's right there on the list. Because it's for her. This is her night. All right, here's my thought, uh, Rob and uh, Mike, you can get in. Do you think they're going to try to, like, corral Biden now and, and kind of maybe do some more control? Because I know when they switched him to her, uh, there's sort of this Frankenstein of staff, like some of his staff, some of her staff. But this is this was a liability. And maybe if he was there last night at the Ellipse, this could have all been a different story. We still would have been talking about the Rose comic. That's true. Uh, Biden certainly did take the attention away from uh, what had been a couple of days of, of fairly negative headlines. As Mike pointed out, um, if I was planning that event at Madison Square Garden, I probably wouldn't have had a comedian there either. But, Bianca, I do, I do hear what you're saying. I mean, we do seem to have lost a sense of humor in this country, and I think that's unfortunate. As it pertains to Biden himself, I think Kamala Harris wants to lock him in a closet for the next six days and not see or hear from him at all. Uh, clearly, last week saying that he wanted to lock Trump up and then having to come out and clean up that mess now yeah. having to clean up this one from last night. Uh, this is embarrassing, and it's not the kind of headlines the campaign needs in the closing days. So what do they do, Mike? That's a challenge. And he's also the sitting president. 
So I've heard all sorts of speculation from Democratic operatives. I've heard people psychoanalyze Mr. Biden and say he's subconsciously trying to sabotage Ms. Harris. I've heard people say that, um, you know, there's going to be other surprises in the next six days. I think it's just this simple, right? We have spent the last year, many of us, noting that no, Mr. Biden No, but what Biden do they do to prevent that? I'm not talking about whether or not he's doing it intentionally. Like, leaving him on a leash to go do these things while she's out, it, is, it seems like, is it something that they can control now? Or, because I said, the day, he's a Mr. sitting Biden president. Is not the nominee. He's not the nominee. And I think in the next six days, you're just going to see Kamala Harris on the campaign trail, stumping and talking to voters, which is exactly, frankly, what she should be doing. All right. Well, she won't be talking to Joe Rogan. We do know that. Or maybe she will. Maybe that's a strategy to recover from this. Mike Gatto, Robert Bluey, great to have you both with us. Thanks for having us.